Hello my fellow Nightcrawlers, welcome to a brand new video. As usual, grab your blankets and grab your snacks and get comfortable because today we're going into the case of the real life Yandere and the disgusting events that happened afterward. This is a case that when you look into it, it really like, like your sense of, man, I have faith and hope in humanity. Um, it just goes down the drain. It, should, it just feels like it's just non-existent so yeah this one's gonna be a wild ride i'm really interested in this one and i can't wait to discuss it so enough of my blabbering let's hop in our story starts off with yuka takaoka a 21 year old cosplayer and bar hostess yuka at least in regards to what the internet decides to claim her as is what is called a yandere and now if you don't know what a yandere is let's take some time to explain that Yandere is a combination of two Japanese words, yanderu, which means to be sick, and then dere dere, which means love struck. So basically, if you can kind of put two and two together, it's someone that's lovesick over a person. Yandere tend to present themselves in ways of, oh, senpai-chan, you're so cute, I love you so much, and now that I have you in my grasp, no one else will ever have you, you are only mine and you must die now. It's a whole uh, thing. It, yeah, it, yandere's are um, a little, little, little crazy. Something that's very popular is the nightlife, and frankly, I think that goes for America as well. So basically what Yuka was is she works at like this ladies club in a way. I mean, it's technically like a gentleman's club, you know what I mean? Female employees that'll provide men alcoholic beverages and stuff like that. Eventually, while working, she ran into a man by the name of Phoenix Luna who also happened to work at a club. They began talking and chatting it up, and eventually they moved in together on May 20th of 2019. On May 23rd of 2019, Luna decided to head home after a long day of work. As he entered the house, Yuka was wide awake. She was anticipating his return. It's alleged that Yuka had found a photograph of Luna with another woman. Now, of course, Luna works at a nightclub, so it's probably just with some random chick, but of course, Yuka decides to say, oh yes, this man is clearly sleeping with another woman. When Luna eventually got home and decided to hit the hay for the night, Yuka decided to take it upon herself to go to the kitchen and uh, grab a knife. She walks over to Luna, just happily sleeping, and decides to just cut his stomach. Obviously and understandably, Luna is pretty terrified about this entire incident that decided to just unfold in front of him. So in a panic, he gets up, trying to like, you know, cater to the abdominal region that had just been stabbed, runs to the first floor of the lobby and just collapses on the ground. Yuka decides to take it upon herself to follow him and then just kind of camps out in the front of the lobby, crouched over with her phone, talking to some person while Luna's right behind her. Luna is like bleeding out like really bad. Well, who was Yuka on the phone with? Was she like phoning the police or something like that? Um, that's actually unclear. They don't know who she was on the phone with, but the police showed up and so did the ambulance. So some somehow, some way, uh, the, the, the am ambulance and the police showed up. It was probably a resident that called them, but it's really unclear. Like no one has come forward about who, who decided to phone the police, because it wasn't Yuka, it definitely wasn't Yuka. Yuka gets put in cuffs, thrown in the back of the police car. Luna was rushed to the hospital, and luckily, he didn't succumb to his wounds and actually turned out to be fine in the end. So, Yuka's, you know, little stabby-stabby incident didn't really uh, work out, thank God. As the police were going through a bunch of Yuka's stuff, they found a bunch of personal journals of hers. Something noteworthy that came from the journals was handwritten messages in blood that said words like I like you and I like you so much that I had to kill you. What? When she eventually was questioned by investigators on why she did what she did, she just said this. Since I loved him so much, I just couldn't help it. Lady. <laughs> Okay, well, whatever. It's clear and obvious. She clearly did it. She's in jail now. Luna's fine. Caden, why did you pick this topic? Why did you pick this topic? Well, I picked this because, one, it's pretty crazy. Really, really weird. But secondly, it's the way that the internet reacted to this entire thing that I felt like it was worthy of discussing. So while all of this was unfolding and the case was basically kind of coming to a close, it was really obvious to see what happened, why she did it, there was a motive, okay, we're done, case closed. Apparently, there were 
some interesting people on the internet that were like, hey, you know, Yuka didn't even do anything bad. She doesn't need to be put in jail. She just needs to be like rehabilitated. Put that chick in rehab. And then there were people even setting up GoFundMes to let her out so they could pay for her bail. <laughs> One of the GoFundMes managed to raise $3,000 before being shut down. $3,000. GoFundMe, of course, has standards and morals and values, so they decided to take down the GoFundMe page. I have no idea why they thought this would have worked out. Like, yeah, we're gonna set up a GoFundMe that'll get out Queen Yuka, she'll be free. Like, please take a shower, God. Surprisingly enough, even after all the dust settled, you'd think uh, Phoenix Luna would just be super upset and very frustrated with what had happened, but he apparently has no ill will toward Yuka. He's just like, yeah, I wish the best for her. Nearly dies. Wishes the best. Dude, I don't... This man has more moral character than I do, because if someone tried to kill me and I was in critical condition, and I managed to live, I wouldn't be like, you know, I know I know, I may have died back there, but you know, best of luck to you. <laughs> on December 3rd of 2019, Yuka was found guilty. Whoa, on attempted murder, who would have thought? And now get this. Yuka got sentenced, understandably. She had her bond and stuff set up, right? It turns out that Luna actually was cheating. Yeah, and then Luna went to the judge and was like, hey, I express no ill will towards her. It's fine. Can you give her a lighter sentence? Oh, this man's willpower. This man's willpower, Jesus Christ. In the end, Yuka was sentenced to three years and six months in prison. She's gonna be released sometime in 2023 to 2024. So all those super hard core Yuka fans out there are gonna, you know, maybe toss her some more money so she can get back up on her feet. <laughs> Look, man, you can throw your money at whatever you'd like. It's it's your money. Do whatever you want. But of all things, why would you do it at that? Free my girl. She did nothing wrong. Oh, what 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 she what she do? Was it like a slight misdemeanor? Nah, attempted murder. Oh. But ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of Yuka's story for now. Maybe in 2023 and 2024, I'll, uh, I'll maybe make another video on her and see if she decides to do the same thing. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why not like and subscribe? It definitely helps me out. If you didn't, why not dislike? And let me know what I can improve on for next time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you on the next one.